So I reviewed Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare this week, and you played a considerable amount of Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare, Rohan Rivas. What did you think? I did. Um, I liked it. It was surprisingly accessible. I mean, it's super, super basic, but at the same time, it was uh, it had a lot of personality. It was very colorful, and as a third-person shooter, it played really, really, really well. What do you look for? Because I don't play a lot of competitive mm -hmm. shooters. Like, I don't spend a lot of time just, like, running around shooting people in the face, and I know you do and are very good at it. So you felt satisfied playing PvZ? Yeah, I mean, uh, so both sides, the zombies and the plants, there are four classes, um, and they operate kind of like enemy territory or team fortress. Like, they have very specific abilities, like the cactus, she is a sniper. So for me, when I play like a third-person shooter, I want, um, I want everything to feel very cohesive. And choosing these different characters felt fun and fluid. Um, and the controls worked really, really well. When I shot something, it all felt very natural, and my hits felt like they, they hit, and when I would dive behind cover or, or run away, like, it all felt very responsive. What makes a cactus a she? It's a she, I don't know, I, but it I mean, is definitely a she in the game. I'm not a botanist, so I don't really know the plant genders. They refer to her as a she, as a, as so a she. I want to honor that and respect that. But you did not play Garden Warfare, but you do have a bit of a history with I've, plants and zombies. And zombies, together. Um, no, I, I played a lot of the uh, old tower defense, Plants vs. Zombies, and so I was really excited to hear about a new Plants vs. Zombies, and then I heard it was a shooter, um, and I just, I just kind of blew my mind, and I said, first off, why? Why does the Plants vs. Zombies franchise need, need to go there, and how awesome is this going to be, you know? Well, I mean, I think, it, the, I think they saw that they had a very successful franchise for mm -hmm. casual players. Let's translate this to something more console driven. So is it, is it more of, would you, and I hate to use the C word, but is it more casual than a lot of other first and third person shooters? I would say it's like in this weird middle ground, right? Yeah. Because it's like the mechanics are very traditional third-person shooter, but its presentation is very casual casual and easy to digest and understand. It reminded me a lot of Orcs Must Die. Uh, it didn't have so yeah. many like traps and stuff like that, but there still is some tower defense in there that you, uh, if you're on the zombie side, you can um, spawn zombies that, you know, so if you find a little dirt pile, you can like, oh, I'm gonna send a, you know, a pale zombie in, you know, just to confuse and just to add more stuff, more targets for them. And if you're on the plant side, you can plant you know, uh, uh, reserves, you know, and so in that way, it's kind of like you can put, you know, little turrets down, and if you're the sunflower, you can heal them. So it's kind of fun to throw down like a really good plant and then just heal that and shoot while I'm standing next to it uh, as the sunflower. Or did you have a favorite on either side of the, the skirmish? I, I mean, I, I would actually have to say it's like, uh, I would say the pea shooter, which is like the, the plants, uh, just kind of basic foot infantry, uh, very simple. As a whole, like the game is just really presentable. Um, it's mm. polished. It, it feels very refined, um, and it has a lot of personality. Uh, I don't know, you know, how long that will last and hold my interest because I think it is kind of shallow. Once you get past all that, it, there's not much substance there. I had zero expectations for this game, and I had never really got into the uh, the tower defense game, and I, I'm digging it. I had a blast with it over the weekend. And you're talking to a guy who who loves playing, you know, Call of Duty, Gears of War, all of those hardcore shooters, and I, I dig it. One thing that struck me as kind of bizarre while playing the game is just the concept of being like humanoid zombies versus plants. And actually see, like I found myself shooting at the other side of the table, like when I was a plant, I'd like shoot at plants and forget like, oh wait, no, it's zombies this time. Because in Halo, it's like, you're red, I'm blue. In, you know, Titanfall, it's like, you have armor on, I have armor on. Whereas like, you are different species, you're totally different. <laughs> I thought that was interesting and unusual. I can't remember a lot of games that there's such a huge difference between, organically, oh, between I, the I two mean, like sides. I said earlier, there's like no, the, the game has such personality. And so, I mean, it, it appeals to a lot of people. Like I was actually playing it, my wife walked by and she was like, oh, this is cute. And like took a second to like look at what I was doing. She never does that with video games. So I think that mm -hmm. they've, like with the original Plants vs. Zombies, I think they've crossed over into this weird territory where it's, it's appealing to everyone, but at its core, it's, uh, it's, it's a shooter game. Do the classes feel like they all are all unique and oh, yeah. can do their own contributions? Abs absolutely, yeah. Because I mean, it's, it, each class has a very defined set of abilities. Um, 
that you can only do those things when playing as that class. And they're, they're complementary. Like I, I said, like the, the cactus earlier, I'm going to set up little barricades. And those are strategic. Yeah, on the zombie side, the um, quarterback, the all-star, can throw up little dummies. Like there's one thing where you have to take uh, the uh, plant's garden and gardens versus graveyards versus mode where you just kind of like go and take the whole map. So when you're trying to take a garden, if you can get three of those all-stars in there and they can set up these barricades, you just can physically block the plants from getting in there. And so it's kind of fun. I was actually surprised by the modes. Like yeah. there's a garden warfare, which is like just a team of four. Garden ops, yeah. Garden, garden ops. You just protect the garden. Yeah, and, and it's the, AI driven. Right. The, the, the zombies, zombies are AI in your plants. Correct, and then you, can, then you can do like a standard death match, which is, I think, I think it was like 12 on 12. There was a lot. There's a robust set of modes for the game, which surprised me. A lot of effects, a lot of sparklies, a lot of explosions, a lot of um, one of the guys is like a cloud that he can throw in the foot soldier, you know, to cloak everybody. And so again, you get like three or four of those guys throwing in and you're just like lost in this cloud of smoke that's damaging to plants. So like a lot of fun particle effects. And it's on Xbox One, so it's technically it's, a next gen game. No, I, it looks great. It, the frame rate is smooth, and you have to have those elements of performance if you're going to get a really good shooter. Is it like the old game in that it had like all sorts of crazy comedy to it? Um, they had backgrounds for all the plants. They had bios for all the plants. But does it have like a a real personality like that? It has a little bit of that, and you can customize, which is really mm. great. So a lot of all of them have different outfits that they can wear, and tattoos, and you know, goggles, and stuff. And so it's like. Funny when I unlock something and I'll go into a multiplayer match and then some guy will go by me in some funny like pinstriped clown wig thing, you know, and it's like, oh, I want to see if I can unlock that. So those are really funny. The sound design I thought was really funny. I noticed and pointed out to Ryan, I pointed out in the review that like one of the, the drones sounds like it's actually a person going, bur, 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 you know, like when it's flying around. Yeah, the comedy is still there. They inject a lot of that personality into the little things and... I think it reads 100% uh, translated from what you're familiar with. So the stickers. Yeah. So you, you build up a currency and then you have to open packs to get stuff uh, and you have to just like open up a pack and see what you get. And if you're playing solo, the sunflower thing, if you're especially not a sunflower and you need health, like that's pretty key. And if you run out of those and you open up a couple packs and there's none in there, there's nothing, you know. You are can't they, really play by yourself. Are the stickers one-time use, or are they... Um, it's well, a combination they're of both. Ability. Yeah, okay. there's some that are cosmetic options, and those are permanent. And okay. then there's uh, upgrades every now and then that will make, like, the Sunflower heal more, or make, like, your gun do more damage. And every character has three slots of those to fill. And, and then, that's what I have a problem with. I think in a competitive environment, any, any advantage people get that is completely random, I think, imbalances the game. It's like, oh, I get a pack of cards and I get this upgrade for my weapon that improves the damage. That's not very, that's not fair in, in a competitive multiplayer space. But if it's random, I mean, wouldn't it theoretically be fair? Because it just, then it just comes down to the amount of time. But what if I'm not opening play? packs of cards? What, what are if you I don't do know? Them? What? What are you going to do with them if you don't open them? Well, what if I don't know that they're there? Th then you're not playing the game very well. Well, but I, I think that that is, but if I play it more, here's the argument, if I play it more, does that make me better than you? I mean, because it's not like, oh, I want to open the sunflower pack to try to get one of their upgrades. It's just like I'm opening up a pack and I'll see what I get. So you might get a ton of upgrades for characters you don't like. Uh, it's a slippery slope, right? Because if you're if you're starting that, and then what's next in terms of like tipping the competitive arena? Um, you know, if somebody who plays a game for forty hours and who smashes me because they have these extra advantages that I can't get because I don't play the game enough. That's not fair. But you were, you, as you were saying, that you didn't really notice a difference with the upgrades. Yeah, I, I, so. st I still think that with the, the, the hype of game that they've built, like Engineers versus Chompers is what I brought up in the review, where uh, Chompers have an ability that Engineers can just stop. They have like two things that are like, I can either prevent myself from being attacked by it, or I can stop you from doing it. So it doesn't matter, as a Chomper, like what... Um, you know, upgrades you have, like that'll still stop you. So I think it's, the, the game has enough checks and balances where if you kind of are smart with ha what character, you know, with, uh, yeah, what characters you pick and how you attack yeah. something, then you can kind of overwrite that stuff. But you do have a good point. But uh, so do you see yourself, if new content comes out for this, would you see yourself resurfacing it and uh, putting Titanfall down for a second and playing some more yeah. Garden Warfare? Do yeah, see the possibly. Stuff? It is a nice change of pace because it does have such personality. Um, and it is visually, it, it is different, and it's lighthearted. It's a nice change to have a lighthearted game that makes you laugh, 
but still deliver some of the core mechanics from some hardcore shooters that makes it fun and competitive.